All right, now let's talk about energy transfer in different populations. Um, so there's a few words you need to know in order to understand this energy transfer. The first is a food chain. A food chain shows how energy is moved from one living thing um, to another living thing when one organism eats something else. So the reason that you eat is, in order, is to get energy, and so um, energy is passing from whatever you eat to you. And if something were to eat you, then energy would pass to that thing. Um, so let's look at a food chain. Um, this is a flower. Um, butterflies drink nectar from flowers, so we're going to say the butterfly eats the flower. We show, show an arrow pointing to the thing that's getting the energy. So whatever's doing the eating, the arrow points to that. Okay, then a bird might eat the butterfly, so the arrow points to the bird. So energy is moving from the flower to the butterfly to the bird. Um, now it's important to know that um, the flower has to get energy from somewhere too. If you'll remember that plants um, perform photosynthesis to get their food. They get energy from sun, so they don't actually have to eat. Now there's a special word for organisms that get energy from the sun that don't have to actually eat their food. They're called producers. Producers obtain energy by making their food using photosynthesis. Okay, they don't have to eat. Another word for producers is autotroph. So whenever I say producer or autotroph, those mean exactly the same thing. So plants are autotrophs. Also protists like algae um, that can use sunlight to make their food are also autotrophs or, or producers. Um, organisms that have to eat food in order to survive are called consumers. So consumers obtain energy by eating other things. So this butterfly eats a flower, so it's a consumer. And this bird eats a butterfly, so it's also a consumer. Um, there's another word for consumer. It's called heterotroph. A heterotroph is the same thing as a consumer. They just eat other living things. Now, there's a couple of um, consumers that you need to know about. The first one are herbivores. And you've probably heard this word before, but an herbivore is something that only eats plants. For example, a butterfly does not eat other bugs. Um, it just drinks nectar from a plant um, or from a flower. And so we say it's an herbivore because it's only eating plants. Carnivores are organisms that only eat other animals. Okay, They only eat other living things um, that aren't plants. For example, if this bird doesn't eat berries or anything like that, if it only eats butterflies, we'd say it's a carnivore. Um, tigers are carnivores too, they like to eat meat. Um, omnivores are living things that eat both plants and animals. Humans are omnivores, okay, unless you're a vegetarian. Um, humans eat meat and eggs and dairy products that are derived from animals, but we also eat things that are derived from plants, like potatoes and broccoli and squash. Um, now, there's one other kind of consumer you need to know about. Those are called decomposers. And we really like decomposers because they break down dead things um, and use them to eat for food. Um, bacteria are one type of decomposer, and fungi are decomposers as well. Um, if they didn't break down all that stuff, we would have garbage and dead carcasses laying all around. So decomposers eat dead things for their food. Now, let's look at how energy is transferred from one living thing to another and how much energy do we actually get from the food we eat. A trophic pyramid is a diagram that shows how much energy is transferred when one organism eats another living thing. Um, so you have to be working with a food chain to make your trophic pyramid. So our food chain that we're going to use is grass, and then the rabbit eats the grass, and then the fox eats the rabbit, and then the wolf eats the fox. So in your uh, trophic pyramid, you always put the producer, or usually the plant, at the bottom. Okay, So grass goes at the bottom, whatever eats the grass goes on the next level, so the rat, rabbit goes on the next level, and then the fox goes on the next level, and the wolf goes up top. Okay, As you'll see, the pyramid gets smaller as it goes up, Okay, and that shows that we lose energy as we're going up our food chain. Um, only 10% of the energy actually gets from one level to the next. So if we started with 1,000 units of energy, divide that by 10. Okay, you should get 100. So one-tenth of 1,000 is 100. So when a rabbit eats a grass, it only gets about 10% of the energy that the grass had in it. Okay, and then the, when the fox eats the rabbit, it only gets 10% of that energy. Okay, so 100 divided by 10 is 10. And then when the wolf eats the fox, it only gets 10% as well. So divide 10 by 10 and we get 1, okay? So the bottom of our trophic pyramid always has the most energy, and they get their energy from the sun. Those are our producers. So they have the most energy. And then the top of our trophic pyramid always has the least amount of energy. Finally, let's look at our food webs. You've probably seen diagrams like this before, and they show all of the feeding relationships in an ecosystem. So they show what everything is eating, not just one thing eating another thing eating another thing. It shows what everything is eating. Um, so let's look at an example. We have berries, grass, and algae. 
Okay? They all get energy from the sun, so they are producers or autotrophs. They don't have to eat things for food. Okay? Now we have a frog and a fish eating the algae. The arrow is pointing to the frog and the fish because they're the ones getting the energy. Okay? And then an eagle eats that frog and that fish. Then we have a rabbit that's eating the grass, and then a wolf can eat the rabbit or an eagle can eat the rabbit. Okay? Um, berries, we have a bear that can eat the berries or a deer that can eat the berries, and then a wolf might eat the deer, and then that bear might also eat fish. So that bear would be an omnivore because it eats both plants and animals. Um, remember that these guys right here, the berries, grass, and algae are producers, and anything that's actually eating something else is called a consumer or a heterotroph. Um, one thing you need to know or be able to find in a, a, a food web is what organisms are competing with one another for their food. So anytime two organisms are going after the same food, they are a competitor. So for example, um, we have two things that are going after the rabbit. Both the wolf wants to eat the rabbit and the eagle wants to eat the rabbit. So they are competitors. So both the wolf and the eagle are competing for the rabbit. Okay, if we look at the frog and the fish, okay, they're both competing for the algae, okay? So the frog and the fish are also competitors. But we wouldn't say that the wolf and the rabbit are competitors because the wolf eats deer or rabbit, not the grass, which the rabbit eats. So a competitor is anything that eats the same food as another organism.